The Corn Flakers sit top of the table after five rounds of the Global Rugby Challenge. But their opponents up for round six is a team that gave the All Flakes a hell of a fright last week. Are they good enough and can they prove they are worthy to sit top of the table for yet another week? We'll find out today as the Corn Flakers are up against the Ospreys for round six. Hello everyone and welcome along to Cornflakes Group, your home of Rugby Challenge 2 and the subscriber series, the Global Rugby Challenge, the Cornflakers. First up in action for round six against Ospreys and this is the Cornflakers who sit top of the table only by a whisker but top of the table nonetheless and this is their side going into this round six fixture. Michael Revlard, Sam Halliday and Steve Gallux will line up along the front row in McDonald and Connor Beck makes a change. They're the second row partners. Joshua Barrett, Elia Malpass and Tamigo De Thich will line up the back row for the Flakers. Into the back line, Ollie Porter, James Dawley will be the halves combo. In the centres, Tony Cesaro lines up with Matthew Smith. The wings are Steve Tickards and Tom Harris with Douglas Eddington, the goal-kicking supreme and fullback for the Flakers. Their opponents, of course, Ospreys, a team that did all sorts of amazing things last week. Didn't score any points, but still went down just 3-0 to the All Flakes. That is an amazing match. Not many highlights on the scoring side of things, but still, to be coming up from ninth position to the All Flakes, who are sitting in the top three, and put on a performance like that, the Ospreys will take a lot, along with that bonus point, into tonight's matchup. Exactly the same 15 as we've seen from them against the All Flakes as well, and they'll be looking to go one better, and this time score some points, rely on that defense again, and take the win. The first against the subscriber side, if they can manage it, what an upset it could possibly be. The keys for them, as always, will be the 19 combo, Brendan Leonard and Dan Bigger. Of course, after the Rugby World Cup, Dan Bigger has just proved he is a world-class 5'8". Can he step up and do it even again against the Flakers? That is the question for this matchup in the Global Rugby Challenge. Let's get down to the action. We are set to go. On halfway, it'll be the Flakers to kick this one off. And they will be in the blue. It'll be Ospreys. The Ospreys playing in the white their way strip for today's matchup. Dawling's the one who's at halfway. And he'll kick this game off off his left foot. He goes deep down. Barret gives chase alongside Cesaro. And a big hit instantly is put into Jones. As wide come the Ospreys looking to break it through the right hand side. Oh, this is very slow turn ball here. It's gone to ground eventually. The court flankers on top of it and turning it over. Changing the mind to Tickhog. Tickhog's through. He looks for width. Can't find the ball out there. It could have been the try, the start, the match. But in the end, it was saved. Out there on the right from Dirksen goes in the touch. Has he knocked on or has he gone Crouch. into touch? Tackle touch. from Beck was outstanding. But could have been, it should have been a try to tick odds. And his partner out there looked like it was, of course, Barrett. But there's the Ospreys. The Ospreys are big hit in the scrum. And I'll turn this ball back on their side where they feel it should rightfully be. Leonard flicks it around the corner. Eventually gets it away to Man of AC. And he chops this downfield. Gets clearance on it for the Ospreys. And they find some good field territory up out of their 22. First line out of the match. Sam Halliday to throw in. McDonald Beck and Mel pass at the back pulls it. And here's Ollie Poulter. Goes line six to Saro joining the line. Dooley finds it out to no one. McDonald does well. Smith again. Here's Harris. Harris was a pawn. Looks for the Twitch. Oh, the fan. The Twitch over no. He is just short. His support nowhere to be found. Massive ball to Bigger. And Bigger hammers this away. Eddington misses it on the bounce. Tickhogs. Oh, big shot. He tries to make room down the left wing. Back it comes now. Mal pass away to Cesaro. He's through half a gap. But pulled down. Great tackle on defense. 
Quick ball again for the flankers. Pull to Anna Smith. Gets it to Harris. Harris gets the wheels rolling. He's a speedster. He's given it a nudge. And he'll score the opening try. What a play. Tom Harris doesn't need support. Looked for it last time. Backed himself this time. Tom Harris, first try of round six. Porter did well. There's the ball from Smith. Well played from Matthew Smith. Now to Tom Harris. And the rest is an easy finish. Up against Eli Walker. No chance at all. The speed of him. Of Harris out on the wing. Too fast. Got away brilliantly from Walker. Grubbers it away. Pass Matavese. No chance. He's a speed express. Is Tom Harris. Well, he exhausted his options pretty quickly with a few early line breaks at Harris. And that time, after looking early for the pass, decided to back himself. Now here is Eddington, way out on the right-hand wing. Hits it beautifully. It's got the legs. It's straight. And it's over. It's another two points for the Corn Flankers. They have excelled what the All Flanks did last week against the Ospreys. They lead this one 7 0 after 16 minutes. Dan Bigger back to halfway. We'll kick this one back into action. Looks to go towards his forwards. They're there waiting, but Rublard pulls in nicely, and his support is right on hand. The teach waits for it. He runs it. Open side. Cesaro. Cesaro. So again he goes. Hammered from the side. And all oh, quick support was there. But the tackle was back to the Ospreys. Who looked to break something away here. Not really too sure where they're going. Some fancy footwork. Keeping this one alive. Now they look to spread it. But it is Dirksen who goes to the safety of touch. But that was definitely taken from the breakdown from outside the 22 which means we will go back to where he kicked it from what a mistake what a little passage of play from the Ospreys there what were they thinking line out McDonald at the front pull to files away to Cesaro tries to charge his way through pull to her again Dooley Dooley just about through McDonald great ball away to Harris and that's another try what a great ball Harris is in for a second try of the match, and the Flakers are doing this one easy. Breakdown by Cesaro. Porter did fantastically. Dooley just about went himself. McDonald with a fantastic pass. And Harris has the finishing of the best of them. He storms over two tries, and he's only had a few touches of the ball. What outstanding work there from McDonald. And the easy finish goes to Tom Harris. Two tries to the right winger and the corn flankers are doing things easy at the moment. 12-0, Eddington will look to make it 14-0. 15 minutes till the half time break and Eddington fires another steaming kick. It is 14 now and the Ospreys are being made to look ordinary here by the Flakers after all the expectation of what they did last week against the All Flakes. 14 now the score, bigger back to halfway. Can the Ospreys find some ball? No, Brett gets it to himself. Oh, a high shot. That's a big one on Beck. And the, the Ospreys retreat back, trying not to get themselves in any further trouble. And the Flakers will look to their fly half to hammer this one down towards the 22. What a nice kick there from James Dooley. Fans are happy. Sidelines happy with it as well. Another line out here coming up for the Flakers. Sam Halliday will throw in. Gets it to the front. McDonald again. Porter away for Dooley. Dooley looks for width. Gets it to Cesaro. It's numbers out here. Once again, Matthew Smith. He's 2 on one Oh, A dreadful ball for Tom Harris. He could have had a first half hat trick. It goes into touch. And the Ospreys survive. 
Another phase of the match. 33 minutes gone to the bank a long way. And it's beautifully played and mauled up field. Steen Camp with the tank. The flankers look to charge back. Now they'll run it. And it's gone nicely through their back line. Bishop all oh, gets it back in to Eli Walker, who cops a high one. And it's a yellow card. That looks like Ian McDonald is sitting out 10 minutes here. Connor Beck can't believe what has happened. His big man mountain second rower is off for 10 in the bin. Chance here for the Ospreys to clear some lines. They've been under immense pressure for a long time. They've got the line out feed. They go full this time. Seven man. As we near that half-time break, it's another throw into the front. Parry gets his man nicely, and they cut it out. Nice shot over the top, looking for some territory. But into touch it goes. Oh, there's a dreadful call. Eddington catches it on the bounce, and he's called to put it into touch. Nice kick from Beck, but an absolute horrible call from the assistant referees. To the back they go. Tipperick pulls in and gets bulldozed. Backwards they go. Now the Ospreys looking, trying, but Cesaro. What a fantastic tackle. Still there as Brendan Leonard tries to charge through himself. Still there for the Ospreys. Running one off as Alan Jones gets a one for Beck and he's nearly through. Please. The Ospreys looking for Ryder Killer on the break. Now's a chance for Walker. Walker's over. And it's a try for the Ospreys. Eli Walker carries two defenders over the touchline and scores a great try for the visitors. This is great work from the Ospreys. They went one way, then the other. Stan Camp to Eli Walker, the fan away from his officer, number Tom Harris. And then Tony Cesaro had another go. Couldn't pull him down. Great work, the Ospreys. They're back in this game right on half time. The fan is what did it. That gave him the momentum. And it carried him all the way over the line. Walker gets to try the first we've seen from the Ospreys in the last two rounds. Now Dan Bigger will look to make it seven. Right on half time, what a killer time to score. And he nails the conversion as well. Well, that's what you like to see. They're making a match of this, are the Ospreys? We'll go to half time to score 14 7. Flake is leading, though. So it is half time exactly here. 14 7 is the score line, and we can see some stats here from the match up. Pretty even stuff from the two sides. Possession is 56 44. Territory is it. It's quite a big difference, really. The Corn Flankers with a 63 37 advantage there. But apart from that, plenty of opportunities for both sides. The handling errors have been pretty minimal. The Corn Flankers will be happy with just three. But the line breaks are a big one. Six to one. The Flankers doing the damage and getting the reward with a couple of tries already going their way. 14 7 half time score in this round six fixture of the Global Rugby Challenge. Can the Flankers keep their spot atop the ladder and grab themselves another try, give them a bonus point and secure their place for yet another week? We will find out over the next 40 minutes. Back to Dan, bigger we go, back to halfway. Second 40 is about to kick off. The Ospreys have given themselves a big chance to get back into this game. As Barrett does well to pull that one in. He's got help from his fellow flanker there. Malpass helps out nicely. Cesaro gets ball wide for Tickhogs. Does well. McDonald rises high back from the bin. Halliday over the top to Matthew Smith. He goes Please. to contact. Flankers, not many numbers there, and they lose the ball. Now it's back to the Ospreys. And film from Perry, wide, looking for Dirksen. He chips over the top. Eddington does brilliantly, but he's giving it away. Back it goes to Bigger. Now the chance again here for the Ospreys. 
looking to use the big numbers. Oh, they've got him here to burn. Beckham found it goes. Can they do it? No. It's brilliant defence from Cesaro. Griffiths should have scored, but he's butchered it again. And oh, Leonard gets a big shot. No arms, shoulder tackle from Ali Porter, and we will have a breakdown of play here. No card, but a penalty to the Ospreys. What are they going to be going for touch? I think they should have taken the three here. Massive opportunity for three points. As they seem to have lost the ball there. But we're back into the action. Into the stands that one went. A line out for the Ospreys. Five metres out. Parry to throw. Gets it to the... Oh, it's stolen from Malpass. It goes to Dolly. Dolly hammers it downfield. There is no fallback. Brits flying. But it beats them all into touch. Oh, if that stayed in the field of play, things could have been interesting. Where was the fullback for the Ospreys? How quickly this game turns around. Another line out for Parry. Throws in and gets to Alan Jones just in the nick of time. Looks to the back line now. Oh, big shot on Stankham. They still offload beautifully. And Walker goes to the ground. Still alive here as they look out wide, finding a way through Lewis. Lewis can't offload and there's another breakdown. Alan Jones to Leonard who's hammered again. I think it's Porter as well. No, it's Connor Beck this time. The captain showing a bit of authority. Putting the big hit on the little scrum half from the Ospreys. This game is very tight at the moment. 14-7. Looking for touch. That's not bad. Just floats over the line beautifully from Bigger. So inspirational for the side. Another line out. Not being their strongest suit so far. The Ospreys. Parry again, he's given it away, and once again, it is Malpass, who is playing spoiler, Matthew Smith away to Cesaro, does brilliantly, Bulldogs as he's got up again, Brad, Malpass, Walter, oh dreadful ball, and it's fallen away, Dirksen now, and the Ospreys, look for with Stinkham, oh beautifully, Walker finds in field, and Bishop goes to ground. Now running away with it is Allen. Allen loses his ball and it's coming back in the breakdown. Here come the flankers. They've got it back. McDonald, the big man. He's ranging through. He looks for support. It's one for Dolly. Dolly running to the corner. It's a fun race, but he'll do it. The fly half is in. And the flankers put this game to bed. James Dooley had a big amount of work to do there. He needed to pull every piece of pace he had out of those boots. And McDonald, welcome to Team of the Week with that beautiful performance. He surely will be in that at the end of this round. Dooley scores it. What a fascinating try. What a fascinating passage from both teams as well. End-to-end stuff. Attacking. Aggressive play. And then the flankers get the try. The offloads were beautiful. The continuity outstanding. And the try is perfect icing on the top of that cake. Eddington will have a gift of a two points here the way he's been kicking. Slight breeze coming from his left. Steps up. Hits it perfectly. It's another two. It's 21-7. The Flankers have the bonus point. And they will be staying atop the Global Rugby Challenge ladder. Well, they had the chance. The Ospreys, like we've seen last round. They could have upset the All Flanks. They had a chance here to really push the flankers who have come good when it really mattered. Halliday awakes a sorrow, does well. Matthew Smith, oh, the step. Trying to bulldoze his way through. Good run from him, though. Poulter finds way. Cesaro! Oh, he's dropped the ball and the Ospreys come away. Well, this one's not over yet. Here's Leonard. Quick little snipe from him. Oh, he loses it quickly. Poulter's on that. Now Dolly. Oh, Dolly Stowe. He offloads to Barrett. Barrett quick hands to no one. Mount pass to McDonald. He takes it to the ground. Oh, the Release. Ospreys all over that one very quickly. And they'll turn this ball back over. Oh, thunderous hit Release. there on Tipperick. 
And this is going to be back to the flakers. Barret goes wide. Revlard, nice pass to Saro. He straightens and through he goes. I mean, it's a fullback. Good effort. The teach comes in. And it's a touch. He goes. Matavasi made the tackle that had to be made. The Flakers showing that ability to break from every little piece of the field they need to. Parry gets it to Alan Jones again. Leonard fires it out to Bigger. Wide ball again. Finding width. His dunks in. Picked up and dumped. What a play. And surely a penalty here. No. It's just gone back. We've got a bit of a, a problem for Paul who was off the side of the field. Mount pass. Oh, and all oh, the back and the captain has sat down. Oh, the Tleach now gets a hefty one. Time is ticking. The Tleach decides to carry on. Finds Dooley. They'll continue with this play out to Cesaro. Cesaro looking for support. Oh, grab his for Harris. But into touch it goes. And it is the Flakers who do the job in round six. They take the five points with a win over a team like the Ospreys that always have that ability to cause the upset. They're in this game off and on throughout the try right on half time. Almost got them the shock that they required. But in the end, it was not enough. Three tries to one, and they were crackers as well, a lot of them. Especially the try to Dooley was fantastic. Three to one, 21 to seven. Final score, bonus point in the bank for the Flakers. They got three tries. As I said, Dooley won, Harris with two, Eddington three from three from conversions. As for the Ospreys, Walker with a try, Bigger with a conversion, getting them their seven points. The full-time stats, and it was all the Flakers' possession. 58-42, territory completely turned around from half-time where the Flakers commanded that. Now they were down 57-43. The line breaks, so though, continued on 10-2, and that is complete domination from the Flakers, who know their way to the try line. Penalty count was fairly high for a game like this. High tackles coming thick and fast. Of course, the yellow card as well did not help the Flakers at all. But they got the win, 21-7, to and they will stay atop of the Global Rugby Challenge. Let's check out that table and see who we have next for, I think, our only second and final match of round six. That is indeed the situation. Just two matches for round six. The Flakers with a great win, 21-7 over the Ospreys. The second match, the final match of the round as well. The Guardians up against the Waratahs, two of the top-running sides of the league. They're going head-to-head -head once again. The Waratahs have faced these subscriber sides before, and they have put up a decent fight as well. How will they go against the Guardians? Now your thoughts as well, very much welcome for this match here, which is said to be the biggest of the series so far, the All Flakes versus the Corn Flakers. Who is going to play these matches? Do we want to play the best 15s for these two sides? Do we want to continue the rotation? Who should play in these matchups? Do we want the best 15s out there? AI versus AI, see who has the best side from the competition so far, cracking match. That will be a real deal breaker for this competition. The other results from round six, though, were the Stormers going down to Clermont, Munster over the Glasgow Warriors, the Highlanders over Bath as well. Rounding out round six, let's have a look at the standings. We can see the Flakers now with a big lead of six points over the Guardians, who are playing their next match up against the Waratahs, who are fifth. And then we have the All Flakes, who had the bye this week, will remain on 22. So a big chance for the other sides to get a bit of a, a leg up here before the All Flakes play their next round matchup, which, of course, could be a decisive game as well. Toulon now just one point behind, but the All Flakes have a game in hand as well. So the next match is the Guardians of the Crypt, the final round match of round six up against the Waratahs. Ought to be a cracker. They need a big win to stay in touch with the Flakers, who are going well atop of the table. But for now, that is my time done and dusted. As always, leave below in the comments who you think deserves to be from that match in your team of the week. Let me know who you thought it excelled, played out of their hearts, and had a fantastic game for the Flakers. But for now, for this first match, 
of round six. Thank you for tuning in and watching, and as always, take care.